Hello, folks, for I'm the one, the only, I am Hobo Tom. And I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. Mainly, I'm here to talk about some SmackDown. I'm kind of unmotivated to talk about SmackDown. Mainly because SmackDown pulled a raw on us. And you'll find out why very shortly. So let's see here. I have to get to my list. Let's see here. The little people I was conversing with, I think, talking about when is um, a fast lane the fact between wrestling matches and other stuff. Dark win. You, sir, always win twice because you get that six count. Ladder match. It's so good to hear from you. For you, sir, our master, the air guitar. Here, Knox the Dragon, here's chilling out, listening to your briefcase boombox.
Leon Blade, you sir can crawl out of here. Hit me DP. You, sir, are a member of the El Generico Band. And then super bad SSLC. Holy shit. Let's see here, the last one. I do apologize, this is in obviously Russian or Slavic. Um, Slavajov, Zizek, PSA, you sir, always win by dirty pen. That's my thank yous again. If you want to make the hobo list, I will be, well, I'll be a little bit late, but I'll be here doing a RR and R show. I'm kind of tempted, but not really. I, I almost want to see if I can get away with what I do with AEW, with um, Impact. The problem is, I don't necessarily want to go through a three month ban. Maybe after WrestleMania. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure something out. But, yeah, getting, getting zonked for three months isn't fun because that means I actually have to make videos. And making videos of wrestling events is a lot longer process. For some reason, than actually just doing the whole live stream thing. So, yeah, I have stuff. I have computer set up. All this computer set up. You're not getting set up. And I know you can't see my cat because she's just barely out of frame. But she's always set up, though. So, but I'm not here to talk about setups. I'm here to talk about SmackDown. Wow. It was <laughs> fairly uneventful for the first half hour. I don't know why they decided to do this. They kind of sucked the whole energy out of it for me. Knowing that I came home from the gym. I'm like, oh, yeah. SmackDown time. They're pretty good. Quick five-minute promo. Let's get to the wrestling. Not this time. I had time to eat, change, and shower, and actually watch other YouTube clips during those first half hour. This first half hour was a time warp. It took so long to get through the first half hour of the show. Yeah, it's just normal stuff. I saw very quick. It, it took a whole f half hour to get through the first. It was terrible. All I know is that one day at work, I saw a woman literally with an offset forearm, and it looked like she had like sinew and like literally scraped like all the skin off her elbow. And she went from a positive three on the zero cool scale down to a negative six. Not good. But let's start off with some SmackDown. Let's start off with SmackDown. 
Uh, Michael Cole interviews Daniel Bryan. A little bit of recap then. Uh, Roman Reigns shows up. And then with that, they, they kind of leave. Uh, Sami Zayn and Baron Corbin, they do a little talk about backstage about why they lost. Baron Corbin. Obviously, I doesn't like Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn, I don't, I don't know. Sami Zayn has issues. He's obviously not the Che Guerrero of SmackDown. Uh, then the Street Profits came out. And then they went to commercial. I think there were like two or three commercial breaks. So the timing of this, this was probably, they came out 8.25. So they were there in the ring. Zayn and Corbin come out 8.27-ish. Spend about another five minutes saying why they don't want to be tag team partners. And Baron Corbin's like, hey, I'm not tag team specialist. I'm singles wrestler. I want to have a singles match. And then, of course, the Street Profits said, yeah, you know what? Well, well, the Dirty Dogs are dodging us anyway. We have plenty of time. So, you know what happened? We Instead of having a tag team match, we actually had two singles matches. And this did not happen, I think... Correct me if I'm wrong, YouTube universe. I want to say it was about 8.35. 35 minutes of zero. See, zero. Like, set, not even zero. Because that's Sarah Miedo. That's zero. Zero wrestling. So, yeah. Not a good way to start a SmackDown. Um, starts off with... And ironically, it started with the smaller person of Street Profits, Montez Ford, taking on Baron Corbin. Uh, Ford is definitely faster, more agile. Corbin is stronger. However, Sammy really acts as a, as a distraction. Because of that, Corbin hits the end of days, and that was it. I waited 35 minutes for, honestly, a five-minute match. That's not good. That's terrible TV. The match itself was okay. Eh, I could have had, the, I could have done the same thing in my backyard. Say ham sandwich of a match. That's probably the train you hear in the background. And then Sami Zayn, um, he's like, "Hey, you know what? I helped you, Baron Corbin. Uh, quid pro quo. I helped you. You helped me. The old this for that." Corbin's like, "I hate you." And he said, screw you. And he left. So Sami Zayn was left to, again, the smaller person. They got a little bit larger person in Montez Ford. Um, Sami Zayn's definitely the more semi-opportunistic heel. Dawkins, great rope running. I mean, he's very athletic for, for a guy his size. Again, I, I go two or three times, I'm gassed. He, he went like, I, I want to say like five or six times. Again, leapfrogs, everything. That was good stuff. Um, again, then they got to the outside, a little brawlish. Angelo Dawkins gets sent into the barricade because I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Cuckoo, cachoo. The old I am the ladder song. I haven't sung that in a while, actually. But yeah, that had to come out. Uh, Dawkins, uh, Sammy then begins complaining about the count. Come on, Ref, is so clown. Actually, it was the number one, two. Nope, nope, two count. Sammy's like, no, that was too slow. Uh, that was a pretty good cadence by the referee. Sammy, again, the whiny, complainy, opportunistic heel. The heel, the heel that you just want to grab and say, what's wrong with you? And smack him around a little bit like the way my cat smacked me around. You saw my previous NASCAR video. My kitty cat likes like someone else. And not me for some reason. Oh, because she always beats me though. I, I'd want to say no, no animals are harmed doing the, harmed during the show, but man, do I get beat on by my cat? So with that uh, Dawkins gets his comeback and has a good neck breaker. Sami Zayn hit an exploder into the suplex as little his little comeback. Ford distracts and he he goes to the documentary crew. He starts making his own documentary. With that, Sami Zayn's distracted. And we have a roll-up victory by Angelo Dawkins. It was okay. I'll give it this much. It was a little bit longer, but nothing great came of this. 
Well, how about a ham sandwich match? Then let's see here, what was next? Oh yeah, then the Enhancement Talent documentary crew got beat up by Sami Zayn. Carmelo and Reginald. Reginald's fired. Man, Carmelo still looks like a 50-year-old Florida MILF. It's terrible. Uh, the next match we had actually got a little bit better and a little bit quicker. This, this first hour just dragged on. It'll be interesting to see what other reviewers say about it because I think it took forever. Again, half half hour plus of no wrestling, just really zonked it for me. Uh, Dominic Mysterio versus Chad Gable. This was actually really good. It showed a lot of classic wrestling, very traditional wrestling. Uh, Gable definitely a collegiate style. <coughs> Dominic Mysterio. He's probably had some of the best training in the world ever since he was probably half a year old. He could do. I mean, the things he can do. With probably as, again, he has the, he might still have 22 years of wrestling experience though. Being in the Mysterio household and probably being around the Guerreros. Uh, Chavo, Hector, um, Eddie Guerrero. He's probably been to, to a pile of AAA and CMLL matches. So he knows wrestling. I almost... I mean, I know he's he's not as good as his, his pops, but still, he's a, he's better than Lacey Evans. Oh yeah, yeah, a bunch of people. Let's just say that. Uh, Gable again, really working over the leg of Dominic, the uh, stump puller. Again, working over the knees, getting ready for the ankle lock. Dominic Mysterio has come back again, and then somehow I don't even know how he did. This was amazing. This is what. He won with the La Mahistra. I have not seen a Mexican wrestler win with, with the La, La Mahistra pin and combo in a long time. That was good. And I'll tell you what, he hit it crisp. It felt right. It was good. A very technical match by both. I'll tell you what, this was a cheeseburger match. And then Ray attacked Otis. He got a little measure of revenge. That was good. Uh, and, and then it slogged again. Seth Rollins came out. A little recap about how he got swung. The promo with, with Kayla Braxton. Who, who goes ACDC. I learned that. Hey, Kayla. Well, I'm single, too. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know what it was about Seth's devil suit. And the reason why he looked like the devil, mainly because he had on a red jacket, like fire truck red jacket, fire truck red pants, and black shoes, and and I and I want to say it was like a black lapel. Uh, it was a red suit with a black lapel. I, again, every version of the anthropomorphized devil with the red suit. Man, that was him. Uh, so he's there getting interviewed by Kaylin Murphy. He's like, Murphy. He was there. It's like, I'll take care of your problem, Mike. Let's get the band back together. I don't know. They finally brought Murphy back. Who knows why. And then the next match was Shayna Baszler versus Bianca Belair. This was actually pretty good, too. Bianca's definitely the stronger of the two. Uh, again, with this, Bianca still looks a little green to me. She just seems, at least in the early stages of her matches, she she just seems a little unsure, hesitant. Once the match goes on and there's a flow and a rhythm to it, and it also might be her opponent. I'm sure Shannon Baser could could talk most people through anything. It just seemed that. For a lot of Bianca Belair matches, the first couple minutes, first three, two, three minutes, it, it seems very tentative, very awkward. And you really have to take a look at that with the eye of wrestling, kind of like a wrestler's eye saying, oh, it, there's just that, uh, 
if you take a look, Jim Cornette has said this, when you take, you know the level of a professional wrestler by their footwork. Her footwork's good, but every so often there's a little slight, like, like stutter step, hesitation step. Maybe I'm being overly critical. Who knows? Again, the thing is, as the match goes on, she gets better and better, and that's a positive thing, because some people, they don't get better and better better they realize that they're hesitant and they're slow and it gets worse and worse and sometimes it's also the opponent i'm sure shannon baser could carry a lot of people shannon baser i think could carry a lot of people uh, uh so shannon uh shannon baser again she begins to work over the arm of bianca belair bianca belair is a little too strong though bianca belair definitely is a little bit larger frame muscular wise than shannon baser Shannon Bay, oh yeah, I know what it was. I don't know someone's comment. Well, Shannon Baszler is a cute butt. I don't care what people say. When I saw Shannon Baszler, I actually met her in in real life at an NXT signing. She actually looked really darn cute, and and she seemed to be a total sweetheart. Shayna, I know some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, teaching me a few things. I'm single too. But yeah. Yeah, and there was the, oh, Bianca hit a great back body drop. She tossed the smaller Shannon Baszler up in the air. Uh, Reginald came down, distracted, because uh, Sasha Banks was there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because Bianca Belair like, started the match with La Mahistra, too. I like that. I, I didn't want to know if Triple A's doing Rea de Reyes. Or if they're going to just... I don't know. COVID screwed up a lot. COVID screwed up all of Triple Mania. I'll have to check that out later. On no, Sunday? Well, yeah, Saturday on the Smash Channel. I don't know. I'll figure it out later. Eventually, one day, I will watch some of that on, on Univision. Maybe I'll make a surprise video about that. Who knows? Oh, and I'll get into videos eh, a little bit next more so on monday because next week's also screwed up so yeah well let's continue on this one uh reginald came out uh tries to hit on Sa sasha sasha has none of it then he goes to nine nine then try to uh take out reginald however she takes out sasha bianca i guess hits the the, the kod on to shana because shana is distracted with all nine's antics meh Actually, you know, it was better than Matt. This, this again, was a solid cheeseburger match. And Bianca just tells Sasha to take care of Reginald, even though she got the win somehow because of a distraction. Uh, Reginald, he ate a slap. Really, he ate a really big slap from Sasha Banks. That was good. And Jey Uso is kind of pacing backstage. Roman Reigns just sitting in his big, oversized, leather grandpa's chair. He, he's as calm as can be right now. Then we have uh, Cesaro taking on Murphy. Uh, this was, again, this Cesaro is so, Cesaro is probably the most underrated wrestler in all of WWE. He's so strong. Uh, he goes, the uh, waist lock takedown, and then a gut wrench, and then a tilt world backbreaker. Pure strength wise, pound for pound, he's again. I've heard of this, I'm sure, you, you've heard this as well. Pound for pound, Cesaro is probably the strongest and probably the best in the WWE. He's just so underrated, though. I never understood that. Um, as the kings of pro wrestling, between Chris Hero and um, Claudio Castanellis, I can't pronounce that last name, he was amazing, even as Claudio versus. Oh, who was it? Uh, Quackenbush. That was an amazing match. I forget if that was PWG or Chikara, though. I don't think it was CZW. But yeah. Check out Claudio Kastronevitz. And I'm butchering the last name. So yeah. C Cesaro versus Mike Quackenbush. That was an amazing match. Uh, Murphy hit a Meteora. However, it didn't, his Murphy's... Offense didn't last long because then he eventually eats the swing. Again, a pretty long swing. Cesaro's gonna get that. I don't know how Cesaro doesn't like 
get dizzy himself. Locks into, maybe just because he goes right into the sharpshooter. And then <laughs> Michael Cole had the botch of the night. Because we're watching, we're watching Murphy, and he's like, oh, yeah, and you just hear Michael Cole, oh, oh, oh yeah, oh, the, oh, Murphy's tapping right now. And, like, that was the cue, I think, and it took Murphy, like, like so, so Michael Cole goes, oh, Murphy's tapping out. And then all of a sudden, Murphy starts tapping, and we're all like, Michael Cole can predict the future, yes. Michael Cole, I need some lotto numbers, and I need those lotto numbers now. So, so yeah, that was okay. Uh, again, solid cheeseburger match. Then we went back to a bunch of backstage stuff on Nia Jax thinks Reginald's cute and Nia Jax is wearing that kind of see-through bodysuit because because you could see her bra underneath and it, yeah it, it, it was kind of weird and funky Apollo Crews comes out with his Nigerian bodyguard that's terrible that's and with his Nigerian accent and we're all laughing at discord we're all laughing at his accent we're like he doesn't speak like that he's from Georgia Boo! His parents are from Georgia. Probably his grandparents were from Georgia, too. Who knows? Yeah, I don't think he ever spoke a lick of Nigerian in high school, either. He probably doesn't know three words in Nigerian. And the ones he does know, he had to look up on the internet, and they're probably being mispronounced terribly. And then Natalia and Tamina, they're in Adam Pierce's office complaining why they're getting it. And, and, and boo, Sonya Deville. Boo. Boo. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo. Boo. So he's like, oh, Adam Pierce had, has plans. Boo. Sonya Deville. Boo. 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 Uh, so then that, and then we have the, a quick ding dong moment, ding dong hello with Bailey, and that was this was on the backstage. Sami Zayn like, I don't know, Bailey made a bunch of stupid jokes and dumb references. Oh, way too much talking segments on the show, even though they had a bunch of matches. They had some good ones, and, and they had some some meh, and and the talking was. And Ding Dong Hello, and then Sami Zayn shows up at the door, and she just closes the door on, on Sami Zayn, as if he just couldn't just walk around the door and, and go into the set. It is what it was. Then, the main event of the evening! We had Jay Uso taking on Daniel Bryan in the steel cage. Daniel Bryan right away eats the steel cage. I am going to agree with Jim Cornette. If there is ever a steel cage in use, there must be blood. I mean, this. I mean, if you run into a steel cage, if you run into a fence, especially my rusty fence, you're going to get cut. It doesn't matter. It's, it's not. Might not be a big cut. It needs to be a cut, though. It, that was the thing when I was a, a kid. You knew. I think my mom, even though she knew I watched wrestling, she's like, "No, you're not watching a steel cage match. It's too bloody." That was the old school way of doing it. Any steel cage match, you know there was going to be blood all over the place. And it made it look real. If I ran this dome into my fence, do you know how many marks and cuts and scrapes I'd have on it? Wouldn't have to be deep. I wouldn't necessarily be a bloody mess, but yeah, there'd be a nick, nick here, gash here, scrape there, something here. It would be messed up. I'd go to work the next day, and they'd be like, what the hell happened to you? Did you stick your head in a bag full of angry cats and and, and, and raccoons? They, they, they wouldn't know what happened to me. Again, if you're going to have a steel cage match, you need to have a little color, baby. You need to do the juice. Daniel Bryan got a blade. His forehead too smooth. Maybe that, that, that hot wife of his doesn't like the color. She likes a smooth forehead. Yeah, baby. No, real women. They like the busted up men with scars. Yeah. Sweetheart. 
Uh, so then, yeah, Daniel Bryan goes right into the cage. Jay goes for the quick escape. He gets caught by Daniel Bryan. Uh, again, the, the use of, he uses the, again, Uso. See, oh, yeah, Daniel Bryan was in the tree of woe. Uh, Uso set, gets up to the top, stomps on the knees of Daniel Bryan. That was great. Then it was a bunch of super kicks. Daniel Bryan uh, hit, hit him in the crucifix drop. He had him in the crucifix pin situation, but no, no pin. It's raining elbows like an MMA fight. That was actually pretty good. This match actually was pretty good. I think someone on this on uh, chat said it was a crappy match with a good ending. And it actually, actually was a pretty good ending. Or it was, it was a good match with a bad ending. It was something like that. Uh, Jay then just countered that big ground and pound. Swing punt. Oh, it looks so good. It looks so raw. It looks so real. Catapulted down. Brian's the cage. Again, there needs to be blood there, baby. Um, Uso goes to the top rope. Daniel Bryan catches him. Butterfly suplex into the yes lock. Jay tried to grab the rope. But this is a cage match. There's, the referee's like, there's no rope break. Doesn't matter. Do you want to give up? I like that. The referees in the WWE at least know their rules. Uh, Jay Uso eventually taps out. And there's no rope break. Daniel Bryan wins. He gets a shot at... Roman Reigns at Fastlane on the 21st. And I'll tell you what, this was a this was a solid cheeseburger match. And that was SmackDown. And wow, kind of very uneventful SmackDown. Uh, so those videos probably going up, probably will go up late. They'll go up sometime on Saturday. I, I'll... Well, yeah, that, that weirdo stopped by my house. He thanked me for all all the nice liquor. He left me a list, and and on this list he said, "Sorry about leaving all, all those women's undergarments on the couch." And that my my cat is a mate. My cat is soft and fluffy. Let's take a look at what my cat's doing right now. There's my cat right there. Yeah, great guard cat. And with that being said, um, I'll tell you what it was—a ham sandwich of a SmackDown. And the big takeaway was they had way too many talking segments. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, a little bit since I kind of went over anyway. Um, what's going to happen tomorrow? This video will go up. Saturday, I'm normally off anyway. So that's always good. Uh, Sunday, I do have to work a little bit. So I will be a little bit late for the AEW Revolution. But that's okay. Probably the first couple of matches. Again, this guy prized it right. You have the pre-show. It was uh, Riho and Thunder Rosa taking on Britt Baker and Rebel. The only two things I the only two things I want to see are Rebel's tits and Thunder Rosa's ass. Everything else, they have nothing else to see there. Miro versus Kip Sabian. I just want to see Penelope Ford have a wardrobe malfunction. I don't even care about the other two. Chuck Taylor, nor Orange Cassidy. All the other matches should actually be pretty fun, depending on how they are booked. I always give that word of warning, how they are worked. Um, Monday, I will be doing a live stream Raw, mainly because I have to work Tuesday and Wednesday, so there will be no Impact Wrestling. There's going to be no AEW Wrestling. However... Thursday, I'm going to make a prediction video for the monthly show for Impact, because I'll be doing that, barring the length of the motorcycle races, Saturday. Friday, I, I do, it's, my normal, it's my normal routine with SmackDown, um, and then it goes back to a normal routine, I think, then really until Easter... Or at least I'll make a prediction video. Well, next week is going to be, well, next week is going to be, or actually the following week, be the normal Monday, SmackDown, Tuesday, Impact, Wednesday, AEW. Thursday, I'll make a prediction video for Fastlane. I'll be off Saturday. Again, Friday's going to be SmackDown, off Saturday. 
fast lane, and it kind of falls into a nice normal rhythm there. So you know what? I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and beware of, of creepy people. Yes, and, and bikers. A lot of bikers out there. Watch out for those bikers. Oh yeah, and then sometime, probably in the next couple of weeks, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the uh, Bike Week extravaganza here. Other than that, everyone, take care.